Please give a huge round of applause for both of them. Come on, clap. Over to you. Thank you. Wow, I don't know. This is a standing room only or sitting room only, so whatever. Uh, so, Ashish, uh, I guess, uh, you know, you're, uh, you know, the, 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 I'm going to coin a new name for you. You've been around so long, uh, I'm going to coin a new name, Godfather of Startups. <laughs> right, so, anyway, um, you know, it's great to do this with you and uh, we have known each other for five years, but, uh, and you would say that these are the most eventful five years, right? This is how girlfriends talk, right? <laughs> We've known each other for five years. And listen, I just, as a, as a marketing guy, I have to do this plug-in. I believe there were a lot of people standing outside for an hour. I'm sorry, you didn't use the book my show reservation engine. Otherwise, we would have given you a barcode and registered all of you guys to enter smoothly. <laughs> By the way, we Yo. are launching a DIY product, which is do-it-yourself ticketing product, where you can register and make the flows much easier, wristband you, put RFID tags, which we do at Sunburn and Goa. So the next event, next time we're going to do yeah, that for you Next time in IIT, use book my show. Absolutely. <laughs> So anyway, Ashish, I thought, uh, you know, let's, let's start out like way back when, right? So, um, you know, when uh, you thought about becoming an entrepreneur, and I think this is more relevant because, uh, you know, there's so much, there's high decibel hype about this whole startup stuff. Is entrepreneurship for everybody? I mean, what's, what's your view now that you've been through this for so long? Uh, well, uh, you've got to be a hustler. You've got to be, in the Indian term, uh, jugadu. You have to have a jugad. And I think uh, you've got to push yourself. And uh, I was just telling Keshav, who was driving with me in the car today, and uh, uh, you know, I said, look, skill sets, education, all of that is about 20%. 80% is attitude. And that uh, you've got to sort of develop over a period of time. Uh, look, we've been around for 17 years. Uh, we've had some really tough times. I remember when we went through the dot-com bust in 2002, um, you know, in those days it was called B2B and B2C, which was back to banking and back to consultancy. Because at that time when the dot-com bust happened, everybody was calling us and saying, yaar, kaam pe wapas aja. So, uh, you know, I remember collecting five clients in Delhi, uh, to five meetings, not, you know, if you've got one call from a client, I wouldn't take a flight and go. I would get five clients over two days, take the August Kranti, uh, I think, Express instead of Rajdhani because that was a three-tier as opposed to two-tier. It had more stops, so it was le less expensive. And, uh, you know, we lived through that. We were getting salary and job offers from Singapore and all over, but we were up for the jugar. We were up for the hustle. And I think if you stay the course long enough, uh, I don't see any reason why anybody cannot become an entrepreneur. I mean, this is the greatest nation, right? It's the, the nation where the guy on the street selling you a magazine, to the guy who's selling you peanuts, to the guy who's got that STD call center, uh, uh, you know, the phone booth, to the bhajiwala, they're all entrepreneurs. He's buying inventory, he's selling it, he's running his own life. Of course, it's a diff different scale level. Great. Uh, so there's this whole uh, single founder and multiple founder stuff, right? So, of course, we see as VCs, we like well-formed teams, you know, uh, well-sorted teams as we call them. And, uh, but what's your view? I mean, you think uh, it's always good to start with a, at least a co-founder and, uh, or two, what's, what's your view on it? Uh, I think a founding team is important, uh, just not a single founder-driven business because, you know, it gets to your head at, at some point. I think you've got to balance out each other's uh, inadequacies, uh, uh, you know, and the positives and the negatives. It's sort of one guy will always be more creative. Uh, the other guy will always be a little more attentive and more uh, operational. And I think when you come together, uh, it's like a marriage, right? You sort of balance each other's, uh, uh, you know, uh, positives and negatives. And I think that uh, builds longevity in the business. But then if you've got 12 co-founders, and you know who I'm talking about, then there can be a problem. <laughs> Not 12, I think it was 40. Oh, it was 40? Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but, but you, you think it's, uh, you know, if you can get a well Two to three. Two, two, two to three, three I think is the ideal number. Anything beyond three, I think there's a problem. 
Uh, three is good because uh, there's always a odd vote, like a board. <laughs> you know, one guy will always take the other guy's side. That's a good way uh, to look at it. Yeah. So three guys, I mean, you have somebody. Yeah, two to three, I think, is the ideal number. Anything beyond is, is a problem. So, you know, just going back to like the ecosystem and the tech cycles that we've been through, right? So, uh, I think this is the third cycle that you're going through. And uh, each cycle you have, uh, I mean, it's the same story, right? Uh, you have a lot of hyper startup activity, a right. lot of VCs come into the picture, mm -hmm. fuel a lot of money, there is irrational spending, and then kind of everybody comes back to reality and right. you know things kind of settle down. And uh, I think you've kind of been uh, you know on your own path and almost like an observer of what's been happening through the cycles in your own way. But you know some of the companies that we've seen, you know, you are in a way. Uh, taking advantage of some of that right. greasing of the ecosystem Correct. that has happened through Correct. the spend, right? right. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's whether it's subsidies or uh, uh, you know incentives, right. whatever. What's your view? You think that's uh, it's here to stay? I mean, so it th through these cycles, that will be how you'll get more and more new people onto uh, consumption. Is is that? I mean, you, you think this is a legit way in which things need to be done? I sail boats. And uh, one of the things I've learned about sailing uh, is you can captain the ship and I'm, uh, you know, with the elements of nature. I can't control the tide. I can't control the wind. I can work within the circumstances. Also, when you're racing sailboats, uh, you're thinking three steps ahead because you've got wind elements, you've got tide. You don't know how the other guy will react. And there are no boundaries in sailing. I can go to Timbuktu, Dubai, and come back and do a uh, round the mark. There are no lines like uh, tennis. By the way, Joko won the match. So there's no lines like tennis or boundaries like cricket. Having said that, in terms of the ecosystem, it's like how tides keep coming in and out. I think both are great, a neap tide or a spring tide. And uh, I think if it wasn't for this hyperactivity, you wouldn't have seen innovation. Right? If investors weren't willing to pump so many millions and billions of dollars and they didn't believe that they could make some money out of it, you wouldn't have had amazing uh, entrepreneurs or uh, IITians and you wouldn't be having discussions like these. I mean, I remember five or ten years ago, uh, I don't think there was an e-cell or an e-summit to speak of. Having said that, I think both have their advantage. As Warren Buffett says, every time the tide pulls back, you know who's skinny dipping. I think a lot of this innovation fueled companies, thought processes, ecosystem. Look at the UX, UI design culture in India today. I think it's, it's arrived finally. You can find the, the designers, you can find great uh, 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 you know, developers. It wouldn't have existed if this uh, crazy hyperactivity didn't exist. But it's also important to sort of realize at some point of time, uh, you know, beyond the point, this is Tamasha. Dhanda is, yaar, agar cost 8 rupiah, 10 rupiah hai, you have to make 12 rupiah and 2 rupiah ghar leke jana hai. I mean, what is this logic of not making money? And if I, like I said, if I take 100 rupees and stand outside with 100 rupee notes and call it cost of customer acquisition, and then after 5 days stand with 50 rupee notes and say cost of uh, retention, I'll have a 5 kilometer line outside. Why do I need to build a business, take money from investors, then come in economic times, then do talks at IIT? So you cannot run a business by giving away money. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, you have to be proud of the service that you're running. And those guys who are short of the quality, you know, look at uh, how much advertising has WhatsApp done or WeChat done. How much advertising has uh, uh, Uber done in, in, for a matter of fact or Google or Facebook. Sure, today they are big sort of businesses, but if the product is good, consumers and you care for the users and consumers, Apple doesn't have a retail store in this country. And most people are Apple consumers today. I mean, uh, they launched uh, uh, the, the music service for 120 bucks. A lot of kids today uh, take that, including me. So, uh, Ashish, what if you had a very uh, kind of tough situation, like you had an irrational competitor, right, who right. was spending a lot? Right. I'm, I'm talking about those scenarios. How, how, what, what do you do? Look, irrationality will come, but it won't stick for long. And I think there will be irrationality. I'm not saying that there won't be irrationality. Uh, and therefore, what you need to do is to look ahead, uh, at least uh, form some long-term goals 
for the business and look at uh, some long term planning and we in the company are looking at a 2020 plan and then you have uh, aop which is annual operating plans so when you look at a long term 2020 plan in india specifically this irrationality is because everybody is running after these 100 million people and i keep saying that right we are not a market of 1.2 billion indians that is you know that is not our universe the tam is the area that you operate in the total addressable market there are 1.2 billion indians 900 million handsets 250 million smartphones 120 million data connections if the guy doesn't have a data connection what are you going to sell him and that is growing at 100% year on year which will go to 600 million by 2020 there are only 18 million credit cards in this country only 400 million bank accounts only 100 million indians that can afford anything so, roti kapra makan sabun there is an emerging middle class of 400 million so what is it that you can do extra with those 100 million all these jokers are running after these 100 million guys so because of that they are doing irrational stuff nobody is even looking at what can you do can you build payment systems for the next unaddressable market can you look at credit scores for the unaddressable market what is it that you can do to penetrate the other day we started uh, uh, selling tickets for maratha mandir you heard of maratha mandir in bombay central dil wale dulhaniya le jayenge or one of these movies is running for the last 15 years or something the ticket price is 15 rupees on the first weekend we sold 600 tickets i don't know who wants to watch that movie after 15 years but some guy who comes on a train to bombay central wants to go and watch it and have popcorn i don't have a problem so i'm saying we're looking at the business slightly differently we are looking at horizontalizing the business we will probably clo- go closer to what china does emulate that model rather than what us does so to answer your question uh, we're looking at services for our consumers where we can mean a lot more to them build engagement time spent on the application increases we just don't sell movie tickets so we've started reviewing and rating a movie uh, it's become the most authentic and transparent platform because after you watch a movie 10 minutes after that we send you a push notification or the next time so people are believing that platform we're looking at uh, videos and music on book my show in a different avatar not the way that you currently see it uh, and we're looking at uh, the movie database where people can actually engage with us more and therefore we see even if there is competition that comes and is doing something else and being irrational i think we'd be able to add a lot more value to our users by giving them a lot more for the money that we charge them so understanding your core product and constituents and building your users. enough both uh, yeah. and and building enough modes around that correct so, correct so i think there's this uh, um, when especially when you're in such a long journey as you've been ashish there's this classical entrepreneurial dilemma right so one one part of the entrepreneurial journey is to be steadfast you have a vision stick to it you know come what may what everybody tells you just don't change and there's the other thing where uh, you know you need to really be open minded uh, see the writing on the wall if things are not happening did you ever uh, in this period encounter a situation where you say boss this is it either i got to do a full pivot or um, take a f- uh, totally new approach to what we're doing have you uh, had situations and any guidance to folks who kind of face that situation right oh most certainly this happens all the time and i think uh, we question ourselves uh, we used to question ourselves uh, uh, once maybe every 2 to 3 years and then economic times happened and now we question ourselves once every 2 to 3 times a day every time we read the newspapers we are like are iska bhi 4 billion dollar valuation hai are 20 guys have shut down and you are questioning yourself all the time but i think having the right investors and i'm not saying that because you're here and prashant is an investor uh, in book my show so i have given you the disclaimer by now so don't hold me against hold that against me but you know having a, an investor like you guys or saif or you know people and we were very fortunate that we got to choose our investors because we didn't have a gun to our head with our back to the wall and raise money at whatever valuation from whoever we wanted we were very fortunate to sort of choose our investors and it's very important because excel has sort of played that role for us uh, you guys have given us timely advice opened up uh, uh, sort of doors for us uh, uh, got us to see uh, what's outside and what's uh, the action outside of the country uh, how are other people looking at the businesses so i think it works in some cases where you stick to your core make my trip is a classical example of that where they've stuck to their core and look at the deal that they've just done with c trip on the flip side you've got somebody like kunal who runs snap deal and they've pivoted the business twice and had they not done that they would have not survived so i think you have both ends of the spectrum uh, but you've got to do what's right for you man and i think uh, it's important in our journey from from ourselves that 
Ticketing is great, e-commerce is great. We're moving from becoming a commerce play to a larger uh, media play. And in the US, a lot of companies move from media to commerce. So I think we're just following the exactly yeah, let's, opposite let's path. Let's talk about that a little bit because I think content has been a dog in this country. Man. I mean, it's That's just, right. Uh, it's just, I don't think there's a single business, digital content that, right. that has really scaled. And so maybe the, the real uh, possibilities there are around convergence, right? right. Businesses that have both content and commerce and somebody who can meaningfully put them together and what better place than entertainment. So really, uh, I think you guys are well positioned to uh, take advantage of this content and commerce. I'm still nervous. Right? I'm still nervous. So I'll tell you the what's content. So, what, so what's, what's your thought process? See, the content business as of today has been the business of Mali's. What I mean by Mali is that you're in the grass growing business. And the guy who owns the content or the telecom guy is in the lawn mowing business. So every time you grow the grass, the guy comes with a lawn mower and mows the lawn on top of you. Because if you are going to pay minimum guarantees of close to 40, 50 crores a year on the content, you cannot make money out of it in India. Unless you own the content and you have small content or you have a rev share or content per stream. So let me give you an example. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me that, uh, why is Netflix successful in, it, in, 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 the, in America? I was going to ask you about Netflix. Netflix. So why is Netflix successful in America? Or why is Pandora or uh, uh, you know, uh, Spotify? And you know, Indians inherently don't pay for anything soft. It's our nature. Yaar. Wo matlab software ke liye kaun paisa pay karega? Wo to free hona chahiye. Windows license to free. Wo mere uncle hai Kanpur mein, uske chacha ke paas license hai. Arre, lo, amko de do. Who pays for music? Uh, we love torrent. We are a country of torrent. Uh, we download, look at them, everybody downloads torrent. Rath ko hoi bet ke. IIT mein 510 Mbps connection hai. Download karo rath ko. And they know how to beat the IP also. I mean, you know, so what I'm saying is that, look, look, I, I, I know that. So anyways, having said that, what I'm saying is that, and I went and met, and mind you, I went and met uh, the Netflix CTO thanks to Excel US. And I was asking him, why is it successful? And you know what the answer was? He said, because it's a eight, at $8 price point, what is the best content at $8? Not what is the best content period, best content at $8. And I, saw it, and I said, why $8? And he said, we did a lot of pivots, modeling, A-B testing. And if we take the price up to 12 or 13 or 14, by the way, now it is 12 or 11, the numbers drop big time. And the reason is because in the US, every household, the average household, spends about $80 on uh, the internet connectivity and, and channels, pay-per-view channels. It's very expensive to uh, have television uh, uh, channels at home. And Netflix at 10% of that cost is value for money. What is the price of uh, cable TV in India? 250 rupees. 100 rupees. 100 rupees. 250 rupees. 250 rupees, may, if you have to look at a 10% subscription, that's 25 rupiah. 25 rupiah, may, I will not even be able to give you Rakhi Sawan's content. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to give you in 25 bucks? You know, I mean, I cannot give you the latest movie. I can't show you anything. So therefore, the model in India is free. Now everybody talks about freemium, free ad supported. But if you've got 40 crores on your PNL or 50 crores as a, a, a subscription, there is no way you're going to make money on that. So what, what, what kind of, con I mean, so you guys are thinking of uh, adding, I mean, just, uh, just so as look, a preview. So look, we're looking at, uh, first of all, uh, if you were to look at the phone, uh, you've got to look at uh, snacking of content. You've got to look at snacking smaller content. bites, yeah. smaller bites of content. You can't have a three hour long movie on the phone. The experience doesn't exist, right? So, uh, and smart TVs and data connectivity and home will come. It'll take three to four years, it'll come. But until that time, how do you sort of build into that? So we're saying that we're looking at uh, four, three or four sort of vertical channels and we're looking at providing, um, uh, without giving away too much, but entertainment uh, uh, news and features, uh, which anyways is in line with what we do. So we started trailering on Book My Show. Trailering is extremely important on coming soon and now showing. We started uh, giving you review and rating. So now we'll start adding video review and rating segments. We will talk about, uh, uh, you know, you don't need to go to Shahrukh and meet him, but a lot of people want to know 
how does Shah Rukh Khan's vanity van look like from the inside? You know, it's it's an interesting piece of uh, content. Um, uh, it, what is another interesting piece of content is uh, Tom Winters, which are the top five actors in India who grew a beard and did not shave. But then I can go to Gillette and sell that segment and say, bought to you by Gillette and make some money out of that. So, you know, you've got to intelligently build content which actually works, works for your consumers, but is also a sellable commodity. And I think that's where people uh, sort of miss the bus. Uh, at least, that's the, in theory, that's the case. As they call it, it's a lab test. We don't know whether we'll be successful. So kind of staying at this, uh, you know, expanding aspects of your business, um, you know, in, in few countries like Indonesia, there's this whole side loading of content. Correct. So do you think that's uh, one way in India? I mean, that there's, see, bandwidth, uh, it's Correct. still not real, right? Correct. I mean, if there's 4G in maybe uh, five places in Kormangla and Bangalore and Correct. a couple places in Mumbai, right? But in, in reality, how, how is this whole connectivity bandwidth issue right. going to play out? So two, two reasons. So in fact, I met uh, Prashant in Bangalore earlier this week. Uh, we're having a lockdown in our Bangalore office, which is a sprint cycle. We're building the new app, which is being launched in April. So 30 people from our product design UX UI team have moved lock, stock, and barrel to Bangalore. And we have a lockdown uh, there. And we're doing weekly sprints. And uh, I was staying at Electronic City. I would travel between Electronic City and our office, which is Code Mangla. And believe you me, forget data, the call. You cannot make a single phone call between Electronic City and Kormangla Mangla because your call drops at least 20 times. I mean, it's ridiculous. And with the new TRA ruling, I should have been a millionaire by now because they're supposed to pay you one rupee. And as a Sindhi, I love that. I'll keep cutting my call. <laughs> having said that, having said that, uh, you know, to answer your question. Uh, so something has to really... No, I think one is connectivity. I mean, so some, one some, is connectivity. Some, some innovation uh, here. See, one is connectivity. The other is uh, when we were looking at the videos and music business. So we did a lot of consumer uh, research, and we didn't go to our top thousand users. The guys that I think use videos on the mobile and music on the mobile the most is the driver community. You look at anybody's driver; they're waiting a long time. They all have a smartphone, which is a Micromax, Intex, whatever, because it's a 5,000 rupee price point. And the guy is always watching video and listening to music. So we went and spoke to 300 drivers across four cities. And the problem was, every time there's a World Cup, or when there is this, uh, uh, you know, there's a, a, a T20 match going on, he switches on Hotstar, and in five minutes, his data pack is over, worth 299 Because 80% of the Indian users are prepaid customers. And data is quite expensive if you're a prepaid guy. So it either has to be telecom billing, or it has to be side loading. In terms of side loading, you have to find a mechanism where it has to be done very quickly. So all these guys actually go and side load content for 50 or 100 rupees. They're willing to pay for it. Mind you, it's not free. So they go to a small shop. Pay the guy 50 bucks or 100 bucks. He gives him a 64 GB ka card, deta hai, sara music dal deta hai. and uh, he, he says it's much cheaper than going and getting music otherwise. So there is a business. Uh, I just think that the licensing, the way the licensing works in this country, is uh, there's a lot to be desired there. With the IPRS and doldrums, uh, streaming rights, all the rights, because the way the money has come into the country to some of the startups, Everybody has gone and paid these royalties of minimum guarantees. So I think that needs to settle. And alluding to your earlier question, as the dust settles down, I think there will be a little more sanity that will come in. And then the side-loading business sure. at value is, is, is worth it because then the money actually flows back to the owner and the creator of the content, yeah, which is key. There's a company in uh, Indonesia. Correct. Right? So which Absolutely. Is so, um, yeah. oh, it's, 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 it's just two more questions. Sure. Okay. Uh, I, th I think just just uh, switching gears a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, ev as as companies evolve, right? So right. you so you so you need to uh, kind of look at your management every two, three, four years right. and see the people scaling. Uh, are they are, are you are your folks hitting a ceiling? Right. Um, so in these seventeen years, how many times did you actually have to kind of rejig your senior team? So you've got to be very careful. I think most people think that money solves all problems. And I think uh, more companies die out of indigestion than starvation. 
So the lesser money that you raise from the market, the faster and the harder you strike. That's one. The second thing is that most people think that the people that got them from point A to point B will get them from point C to point Z. The moment you raise capital, your current management team is not going to get you to the next curve. Every time you raise capital, you've got to sort of rejig your leadership team, or at least think about infusing fresh talent. Look, uh, I'm 42. I started the company when I was 24. Another lesson that I learned is that, you know, hair is like how water seeks its own level. It goes from places you don't want it to come, and it comes from places you don't want it to come. Kaan se nikalta hai, baal se jata hai. So our average age in our company used to be 27, 28. Suddenly, I'm seeing my AVP team to SVP team has screwed up my average age in the company. Now suddenly we are looking like, you know, uh, 37, 38, because my new CFO is in his uh, early 60s. Our, uh, uh, you know, senior vice president of operations, Anil Makija, is in his mid 50s. But I think it, there is a balance of uh, experience, but they've got to be young at heart, young at head. Otherwise, if they're not going to be absorbing like a sponge and trying to solve new problems, because in our business, uh, we're getting new problems thrown at us from users on a daily basis. And unless we're not sort of ready to pivot, do A-B tests, unlearn and learn again, then even that team won't uh, sort of hit the mark. And therefore, it's important to keep growing that team, but to have a team which is uh, extremely young at heart. And uh, like I said, it's all about the attitude. So we're always looking for those sort of people. So switching gears a little bit onto investors, right? So you've uh, dealt with investors over 17 years. Have, uh, I mean, between, let's say, your very first or second investor and investors today, have you seen investors evolve and have they evolved for the better in this country, you think? Do they understand entrepreneurship better? Do they empathize with entrepreneurs better? Do, are they willing to roll up their sleeves and work? I mean, you, but, but in general, um, uh, how have you handled conflicts, whether it's on how much money to raise, whom to raise, you know, business plan, scale of growth, blah, 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 blah right? So, uh, how has been your... Uh, that is a classical plug-in from Prashant. He's buying me beer tonight. That's why. No, no, please he's, don't he's, talk about accent. No, 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 I have to. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't, no, actually, I, no, no, I really so wanted I'll you to talk so about... So, look, yeah. in general, uh, 1999, uh, when I was 24, I, uh, I couldn't even send any email because it was the TCP IP account. And I sent a fax to Chase Capital Partners, JP Morgan, in uh, Nirmal, in Nariman Point. And um, I raised half a million dollars, that was about two crores, uh, on a business plan which was on a piece of paper, on a fact sheet, one page. They said it should, has to be on one page. To the point where today you've got investment bankers, you've got some shark tank, and I think you had something earlier where 10 ideas were there and 17 investors were looking at it and you know it was kuch nahi hota tha us time yaar. you know in 1999 you would go uh, shaking pissing in your pants with one business idea and the guy would be you know screaming at you and all of that but he would invest so there were the heydays crazy days and then came the 2002 dot com bust in india where you said dot and somebody would kick you out of the door and everybody disappeared here dot com matlab, it was a bad word and then 2007, that cycle happened again. Yeah, then the GFC happened in 2008. Again, you were a bad word. Abhi, you take an investment idea. Those same investors ask you 100 questions where they were willing to invest your Johnny and his cousin it till one year ago. So I think, you know, sometimes investors are herd mentality where if there is positivity, they all run. Every business idea is a good idea. Right now, everybody is calming down. I think this sort of osmosis continues. But I think it's important to have investors which have solid teams and a base in India. Uh, SEF is a classical example in our case. Axel is an, a classical example where you have analysts, you have people on the ground. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they, they give due respect to even a kid with torn jeans, uh, comes in with a business idea. You're always willing to listen and hear. I've seen Axel and SEF uh, over a period of time work with uh, teams, even if they've not invested money and keep track of them. And I think ecosystems get built over a period of time, um, it, 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 generally speaking, in, in that f form and fashion. It cannot be ad hoc where a hedge fund comes in, dumps money, because the faster he's dumped money, the faster he's going to run with his tail between his legs once, uh, you know, the markets uh, 
uh, have gone down. I know you and I have had healthy sort of uh, arguments and discussions on scale versus blowing up cash. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, it's it's uh, sometimes we push you guys and sometimes you push us. And it's that symbiosis and symbiotic relationship that needs to continue. And therefore, it's important to find the balance. And it again sure. comes down to uh, meeting of the minds. And if you find the right sort of investors, um, even in a bearish market, you have guys who are bullish. So my last question. Um, so of course, everybody knows about your seaman activities and... Uh, so is there anything else uh, for hobbies or otherwise that we don't know, Ashish? That what, what Look, I, uh, I don't like Hindi movies. I don't watch Hindi movies. Uh, I sell them. If I own the distillery, that doesn't mean I have to be an alcoholic. Uh, I go to PVR Juhu every uh, Tuesday because it's 130 rupees. <laughs> the night show, and I pay 20 bucks to book my show. So 150 bucks for two tickets. And then I buy on Book My Show 320 rupee combo popcorn. So, so for 620 bucks, I'm out. So, so you don't watch any movies, period? No, I do. On oh, Tuesday on, nights. On only Tuesday On Tuesday nights. Night. So I'm watching Asterix tomorrow. Okay. Uh, on Tuesday. Having said that, I think, uh, uh, you know, in terms of interests, uh, it's marathon. Life is a marathon. And you've got to have interests on the weekend. I don't kill myself working Monday to Friday. Uh, get into work. Leave on time. That's the same sort of work-life balance we have in with the kids. We have Friday night beers on our terrace. And then we all ran the Mumbai Marathon, 128 of us. So fitness is a big thing. Some of the guys, if we were in America, we would get sued. But some of the guys, their bonuses are linked to their health parameters in the company. So if they don't lose X amount of weight or aren't fit, uh, they're not going to get their bonuses. So we have a work-life balance. Uh, we do. I don't know if you guys have realized, and I'm going to make this last point. I know somebody has been giving these placards, and next you're going to hit us with it. Having said that. We, uh, you know, life is not about how much money you make, and, but it's about how much you contribute. We run a charity which you know of, Book a Smile, and I know charity is close to you. I don't know if a lot of you uh, realize this, uh, and I don't want to give a discourse on uh, the Bhagavad Gita, but the Gita basically talks about uh, the discourse of Krishna to Arjun. If, you're, if, the, if the, uh, your end goal is clear in your mind, the, uh, the means doesn't matter, right? And so, I don't know if you realize, if you buy tickets on Book My Show, we used to ask everybody to uh, add one rupee per transaction, opt in. Then we made it one rupee a ticket. So when we used to do an opt in per transaction, it was 8,000 we used to collect every month. Then we made it one rupee a ticket, it became 80,000. But Indians are generally cheapskates. Nobody pays. Ab I usko opt out. Kar diya. And the intent was very clear. Not a single rupee comes to me. Just by making it opt out, we started cheating consumers, generally speaking, but for a good cause. Do you know how much we collect every year? We collect 7 crores, 55 lakh rupees. And every single dime we have supported to kids who can't afford it and we take them to the movies on Monday morning, buy them coke and popcorn, show them a movie, take them for games, we've taken them for ISL. So I think life is a marathon and we look at work as a marathon. It's not about a sprint. And so you do what you do personally, Monday to Friday, weekends I don't work. But it, keep the balance and you can keep going for 25 years. Thanks, Ashish. We can keep going on for the next couple hours, but unfortunately we can't. So uh, just uh, two uh, q and So is somebody lined up uh, for a q and uh, OK, one, one here. Go ahead. In today's uh, ET, I actually was reading about, uh, you know, there was a two-page story of, about uh, Book My Show today as you would know. So there was something about, you know, you raised about 150 crores in total and most of it is lying unutilized. I'm surprised. I mean, you know, when we raise cash, which is far lesser than that, my investors pressure me that, you know, you should, you should just step on the gas and just expand, you know. So, I mean, as an entrepreneur, I have my own speed and calibrated, you know, approach to it. As an, in, uh, as a, as a, uh, how do you, you know, manage to fend off market pressures and investor pressures to conserve cash? and when you when you were raising that cash, what was the kind of utilization that you had, you know, uh, you know, visualized? Was it uh, was it was it something to do with the game theory approach that you just want to, you know, appear uh, well, uh, you know, funded? Well, always raise the money when you don't need to. Whenever you're raising money and you need it, means you're going to be up against a wall. So when you raise capital when you don't need to, uh, you'll be more patient with that capital. And I use that capital like it was my own. Right? So when he puts in his money, when I have a fight with him and a pushback, it's his money and his investment in our company. And that's how you have to look at it. You know, money cannot be uh, looked at frivolously, number one. Number two, I think 
my question first of all it would be the wrong investor then because i would question the investor ki aapne you trusted me with the idea and running the business sure there is an advice there is an advisory council there is a board and we can work towards it but at the end of the day you've got to take that decision and that call for whatever and believe in it whether it's for the right reason or the wrong reason i mean whatever your decision is and stand by that decision of course there are mechanisms of checks and balances that are built in there are internal auditors external auditors there's a board there is advisory council there is an operating group within the company i'm assuming if you put these systems and processes in place you'll never go wrong sure you'll miss one or two opportunities but sure you'll get the right opportunities and do it and build the business the right way so i think it's that fine balance and that's why finding the right investor is equally as important as hiring the right people and finding the right co-founder Thank you. Uh, hello, Ashish. Uh, my question to you is: uh, Why don't we see any competitors for Book My Show in India or in the Indian market? Like, if you look at the e-commerce sector or any other food set delivery sector, there are uh, competitions, competitors coming up on a daily basis or on a monthly basis or yearly basis. but uh, in case of book my show we hardly see any competitors like strong competitors there are com uh, people who sell tickets online but nothing compared to book my show uh, what stands you out from them see as indians we are very shy but what i can tell you is because we are bloody good at our job that's why we are where we are <laughs> simple we're damn good at what we do my team and us we are like that movie 300 like the greeks we can screw anybody having said that i think a lot of people don't know that that we had 19 competitors in 1999 in 2006 when the markets picked up we had 21 competitors even today as we speak there are close to 25 competitors that we have even today as we speak but you know look we've done a lot of things right uh, kudos to the team and my founding team my cto has been with me for 16 years my head of operations both of them have been with me for 12 years each my head of customer support used to be a call center agent became a team leader became a supervisor today leads a team of 300 people 24 7 365 days of the year my head of warehousing where every event where there are 5000 people that come there are edc machines there are turnstiles there are satellites there are links that need to be set up there are tabards that guy used to be an office boy in my company he cannot speak english and today leads my warehouse and he runs his own inventory in in and out on his own he's built it on salesforce he integrated it so we allow people to punch far above their weight and therefore when push comes to shove these guys are ready to kill and we are very good at that and so today you're seeing us in the newspaper or et or whatever it doesn't distract me the fact is we've had some really really tough times but like i said life is a marathon and competitors will come my biggest competition is the mindset of the indian consumer my biggest competition is the ecosystem and my biggest competition is the box office and i don't care about anybody else okay thank you lady at the back, the back. Yeah. Last you need question. to shout yeah go ahead Look a uh, good question whether movies will get released online and do you see a future uh you know why movies do so well in india uh a lot of people say oh india is a poor country destitute there are slums so we want to escape from reality and see people dancing around trees that's a lot of bullshit we are a hot country 9 months or 10 months of the year the cheapest form of indoor air conditioned entertainment is movies do you know we have sunlight 11 months of the year indians are the highest vitamin d deficient country in the world because we don't go enough in the sunlight if you become dark you will not get married i'll tell you this example because we run book my show in new zealand the day the temperature goes above 35 degrees celsius everybody is out golfing sailing swimming running we lose business and it is the cheapest form of entertainment you know there are 3.6 billion movie tickets sold annually in india which is all of africa middle east north america and europe put together also movies as a social activity so a lot of
people across the world have other social interests. They go and watch a football game together. They go for ice hockey. Uh, they go to a pub and drink. Uh, we have four dry states where you cannot drink, so what do you do? Eat ice cream and go to the movies. So I'm just saying that I'm not being a soothsayer or a fortune teller. Sure, it can take a dip. I'm sure there will be a problem. But the experience of going to the movies together, the smell of the popcorn, sitting with a friend, going out, uh, probably will be there for a long time to stay. Uh, while even though online comes in. And that's one of the reasons we're hedging our bets by even starting an online business. So if people do move and consumers move, we'll be there. Hopefully, time will tell. Thank you so much. We come up the end of the session. I'd like to felicitate Ashish. A small token of appreciation from IIT Bombay. Okay, again. Okay. Thank you so much. I'd like to felicitate Prashant as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, panelists.